Press state, space bar <laughs> to restart. Larian's like, again, again, again. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Start a new career. Uh, have resume on file. Let's you use interview data from a prior game if you'd like to try to keep the same resume. If yeah, you don't want to change fine. anything. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, John. MMC remembers you. You have an interesting resume on file. The economy is fair at the moment, and you've got those options. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to accounts receivable. Well, your options will be the same. Would you like to pick anything different? Nope. Okay, so we're going to be borrowing a friend's calculator. Yep. We're then going to report to Carrie Hoffman. Yep. And then we're going to learn to use the computer. Yep. You did a good job. And the economy is depressed, but you still got options. Go ahead and go with senior accounting. You got the job. Go ahead and... What did you pick for this? Report. Uh, report. Yep, report. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then uh, refuse. Refuse, yep. Hey, you did a good job. What was that hard? <laughs> then you picked Accounting Supervisor. Yep. Did a good job, again. And then you told Jason Parlay. Yep. Now, <laughs> what do you do? You know, I feel like it would be cheating if I did anything else differently. So you want to say this is impossible and then interrupt a meeting? Or you just want to interrupt you the meeting? We want to pick up everything. It's not cheating. I mean, you you finished a playthrough of the game and you're tackling another one. Yeah, but I've been doing exactly the same thing for everything else. Uh, let's go ahead and interrupt the meeting. Okay. Jason's first reaction, of course, is to have you shot, and then you'll tell Bernard. I tell Bernard. Okay. You did not upset people this time. Good work. I yeah, I did not. Telling although, that although I think I I missed something too as well. Besides that, because I I think I had five points there instead of three. I can't remember. But you didn't upset people. I did That's not. What the economy is fair, and financial analyst will be what's in store for you. Mm -hmm. you got the job, and we're back to this <laughs> option. <laughs> well, since we know that one's not good. And we well, no, no, maybe one's not bad. I mean, you got into upper management. It's just that yeah. MMC's biggest competitor. You you might say you'll sue, but I think there's a whole, like, conflict of interest and trade secrets involved there thing going through. Only, only if she was working for the company. Who like if she, that's exactly. why That's why I asked. Like, she's an IRS researcher not working for the company. That would be my interpretation of it, yes. Okay, so since we know one's not going to work and we don't want to do three and four, uh, it becomes two and five. Now, 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 if you're going to lose, now if you're going to quit, because that's the case, you weren't fired, you quit. Right. Yeah, like, so like they, you know, it was, I guess it was just a situation where they talked to you and you ended up resigning, but they didn't fire you. Unlike Yamcha was fired for bootlegging a project. So it's not a situation where you can sue them. They just, they used legal and cunning corporate maneuvering and pat was like look you can just get it i'm like okay cool but if they're going to be upset by you marrying a pad how do you think they might feel with casual sex mm. but is that their business it wasn't their business if i married her either but they did anyway so i don't think i'm gonna go with two either let's go with five okay this is the right move okay that thing is just an entire that that choice right there. It's an entire fucking landmine. <laughs> like, it, it really is. <laughs> really is. It's not the, fair either. It's one of the things I really love. <laughs> just bam. What do you want to pick? You're like ah. Uh, None of these are good options. Your competitive analysis indicates that Behemoth Systems is planning to purchase the Mel Design Company, a leading MMC supplier. Your response is, compete for Meld or let Behemoth have Meld. Well, I don't know what Meld is doing, how Meld is doing right now. Um, but if they're a leading MMC supplier, I'd, I'd, I'd like to hold on to them, I guess. Um, let's go ahead and compete for Meld. 
a seemingly endless bidding war between MMC and Behemoth erupts until an oil glut forces MMC's Houston-based competitor to drop out of the bidding. Still, Joshua Colon, Meld's president, has more smiles than a Cheshire cat. Cheshire cat. During a standard financial review, liquidity problems appear due to re recent acquisition expenditures. Do you tell Gary Hoff, uh, not Gary, Carrie Hoffman, cover up, or go to a seminar in Niles, Illinois? That's, that's interesting. <laughs> interesting how? Well, I'm assuming that this is, this has come about because of our attempt to, I guess, keep meld. But if it was a bidding war, we didn't have expenditures. Any not anything out of the out of the ordinary that we would normally have, we would pay people to research to try and purchase meld, but we never actually bought meld. Perhaps it came across due to other recent acquisition expenditures, which might be outside of meld and just aren't covered with the simplicity that the game presents to you. So they're not. So they don't have to be correlated. The the options. They don't have to be correlated. No. Okay. Uh, so I guess in, yeah. it's good to take like each. Thing, each prompt that it presents you as a unique instance. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, tell Carrie Hoffman. Okay. Your standing with Carrie Hoffman rises sharply as you sit through his lecture on conservative fiscal policy, nodding sagely, and more important, not yawning. For two years, you were in this position, and you did a good job. You'll be remembered for your good judgment your aggressive go-getter approach, and your open manner of addressing problems. Nice. And the economy is expanding. All of your options are job level sevens. Okay. All right. Ha. Huh. Job option six would be the one that most fits what you've been doing up to this point. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and go with six. Fortunately, you're remembered for only good things. And you got the job. Sweet! All right. 32 years old. Five years employed with the company. Job level 7, 65K per year. I have my office. I have the travel and entertainment allowance. My life insurance policy. I have a company car. I have a Chevy company car. Personalized stationary and garage parking. You get an excuse me. This should be your turn. You get an insider trading opportunity when you hear a rumor of a tender offer for MMC's stock. Your reaction is three. <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity is not always a ticket to disaster, and ignorance is not always bliss. But honesty helps avoid pitfalls. You have directed MMC heavily into Mexican investments and get caught in currency fluctuations. Big losses are imminent. Your course is, try to manage the risk starting now, disclose potential losses to senior management, gamble on future fluctuations to make up the losses, hold a press conference to blast the Mexicans. <laughs> um, you know... We're not going to blast the Mexicans, so that's going to be a no. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so one, two, or three. Now, you can try and manage the risk, but if, obviously if it fails, you've doubled down now on your failure and you know, are now at risk yourself, especially depending on how heavily you, you might have invested. Uh, gamble on, flu on future fluctuations to make up the like gamble as in uh, I'm assuming Basically you'd be like taking chances yeah more so which, than usual which is this I would is, is almost like the same thing as number one in a way I don't know what the difference is between one and three as far as uh, risk basically management. like managing the number one would be like cutting like 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 the blood losses and managing like expenses and pulling out of the Mexican investments basically as fast and as safely as you can to try to recoup whatever investment whereas number three would be like all right this idea but i heard this idea from like a nigerian or whatever i got like a mail and then suddenly i'm in this and then i'm in that <laughs> you know basically trying to find whatever thing that could be an opportunity and going right for that i see well 
I'm only the assistant to the treasurer. I'm not the treasurer, so I can't. I don't think that I would want to try and manage the risk or gamble on future fluctuations by myself. Let's go ahead and disclose the potential losses to senior management. All right, maybe I should actually select the fucking game window again. You avoid blame for future problems while minimizing MMC's losses to date. Your stomach demands Alka-Seltzer every time you see a refried bean. <laughs> Three Latin American Confederates are arrested for technology theft. You met last week in Mexico City to advise them about currency exchange. Do you tell Jason Parlay, go on an extended vacation, or Stonewall? Listen, folks. Uh, in circumstances like these, if you don't immediately go up to somebody and say, hey, this is an issue, uh, <laughs> I, I saw these people then you are no longer going to be employed there soon enough. Let's go with number one. Straightforward, but leads to an investigation of your handling of cash transfers. Hope you were straightforward here as well. Your integrity shines like silver. Sweet! John, after two years, you did a good job. You'll be remembered for your impeccable honesty and your open manner of addressing problems. The economy is fair, and there's only one reasonable option. Let's go ahead and become the treasurer. You are still only remembered for only good things. Sweet! <laughs> All right, 34 years old, seven years with the company, job level of eight, 77K per year, private office. Uh, the travel and entertainment allowance, the life insurance policy, we've upgraded from our Chevy to a Buick, and three-hour lunches. I know, those are awesome, right? <laughs> those, those sound amazing. Paid company time, three-hour <laughs> lunches. <laughs> Paid company, three-hour, that's three-hour lunches per day. Per day. Of course, you are salaried, so it's not like you're getting paid like per the hour to the hour, but still, sure. on company time. It's on company time. You get several phone calls, or phone messages, on your way to lunch with the executive vice president, Brooks DuPont, who is not a patient man. Do I call your bond trader, call MMC's corporate banker, call both of them, return neither call? <laughs> what do you even do during lunch? Whatever you want, man. Come on. Three hours. Oh. All right, I'm not going to call my bond trader. That's dumb. Don't do that. Uh, so one and three automatically become out. So do we go with two, which uh, contacts the corporate banker for the entire company, and then go meet Brooks DuPont? No doubt we'll probably be late to that meeting. Or do we return neither call? You get several telephone messages on your way. So it's not just one, it's several. So I'm assuming that they're calling and calling again. So Terminator says, assuming like it's 1985, it's now $170,000 per year. Interesting. Uh... How would this go about <laughs> in real life? <laughs> J2 is at work now. <laughs> Summer B, J2 is the treasurer of MMC. <laughs> Call MMC's corporate banker. Okay. First, Nouveau Bank has pulled MMC's credit line because of a credit filing irregularity. Because of credit filing irregularities, you must act today to avoid a major snafu. Whoa. <laughs> okay. 
do I plead with the bank, hope the accounts receivables come in, go back to our old bankers, jump out the window. I'm pretty sure this one came up as well during a live broadcast while people were playing, and they definitely wanted to jump out the window. It was awesome. <laughs> go out to the mob for a loan. Oh, man. Four and five are obviously out. Aww. Four and five are obviously out. So the question becomes one, two, or three. And yeah, damn it, J2. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two is not an option because I have no direct control over the accounts receivables. I'm hoping. So I either have to believe that my Silver Tongue will be able to get the bank to, uh, I guess, re, uh, reestablish the credit line or go back to our old bankers. Problem is, I don't know who our old bankers were. I don't know why we left them in the first place. Sure. I, don't know how long, I don't know how long that's going to take either. You know, it would be a situation where you would like as much information as you can get, but the game's like, no, you make judgment calls based on this. Yeah. Yep. Ow. <laughs> Where is the 50,000 bitcoins on an old hard drive? <laughs> oh, J2, your tongue would do wonders in the year 21 plus. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, yes, fortified the penguin. Six, proceed to eat lunch for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Plead with the bank and go back to our old bankers. <laughs> Both of these situations suck. This is not good. Now, the bank would not have pulled it unless they were determined to keep it that way. That's the thing. Like, they would have probably done their research and been like, well, if we're going to do it, we can't take it back. So I don't think pleading with them is going to work either. But I don't think going back to our old bankers is going to, is going to work as an immediate fix either. I can't, and you don't, you don't immediately transfer an, an entire company's, uh, funds yeah, the entire credit line. The entire credit line of, a, of, a, of an entire company, uh, I'm assuming a very, very popular and, and, and profitable company, into another bank. <sighs> da, 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 just see, yeah, at this point, you would do the roll of the die, and I'm over here like, well, let's think about this. Bit by bit. <laughs> Certainly, I, I do that plenty of times. I'll analyze situations bit by bit. I mean, if you want me to roll die for you, I can, or you can keep going. It's not a problem with me. No, you have no. over 120 plus people listening to you debate between these options. This is important. <laughs> this is more important than watching you eat, J2. This is serious <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> J2 has no key change. That is why it has cost this. <laughs> save state? I'm not save stating DOS box. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Think, 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 think. This is decisive J squared in action. One. The only thing harder than getting to see a banker is getting to that banker's heart. You even have to pay for your cup of coffee. Was that a success or a failure? Guess we'll find out at the end. Okay. You must review MMC's investment portfolio in view of unstable economic conditions. You meet with your financial advisor, Pat Ivers, and decide to sell bonds, buy more bonds, 
Let Pat handle your investments. Play golf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, not Pat again. Oh, different Pat. All right, all right. <laughs> different Pat. Different Pat. Okay. We're not going to play golf. We're not going to let Pat handle our investments. We're not giving up that power. So the question becomes, buy bonds or sell bonds? And unstable economic conditions. Unstable in what way? <laughs> what is wrong? What, what is causing the instability? <laughs> Give me more info. At this point, it's, hey, heads or tails. <laughs> it's basically what it's telling <laughs> this me right game now. game will teach you to be more decisive. <laughs> <laughs> you can't always have more information. <laughs> uh... At least tell me what, what, what the price is right now of the bond. <laughs> At least tell me that. Look, all you get is what's on the screen. <laughs> oh, man. In view of unstable economic conditions, you must review the investment portfolio. I guess that's why we can let Pat handle it and just have it, have it fall on his. No, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. No, 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 no. Look, you're just the treasurer of the entire you know, corporation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends, bloody Black Shield. It depends. I guess in that situation, following with what Bloody Black Shield says, you could always just buy more bonds, wait for the company to state, you know, wait for the economy to stabilize, and then MMC will be all the richer for it, right? <sighs> Are you hitting the desk to, like, inspire your thinking? No, I'm hitting my lip. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. No tune, dude. Chuckle fuck democracy got Yamcha rat. It's fired. <laughs> Need to see J2's cam. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Just to see, like, J2 trying to think about all these things. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Unstable economic conditions. You're like trying to decipher well, what could it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Just take it as it is. Unstable economic conditions. Oh. It's not the advisor's job to handle the finances. It's my job. I'm the treasurer. Yeah, it's the advisor's job to provide advice as to what the treasurer should do. I like how it also doesn't tell me what his advice is. If there was an option for that, I'd be grateful. <laughs> Uh, bye. Oops, let me just put two in the fucking <laughs> hitbox chat. <laughs> so professional. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Buying more bonds is like adding oh. Freno to MMC's portfolio. MMC's investment capital now consists of the Petty Cash Fund. John, you have been in the treasure position for three years, and you did a poor job. You'll be remembered for having the discipline to finish work before playing, providing ineffective solutions to problems, and using poor judgment. Your first negative strikes on your record. And the economy is sad. Oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, so, based on the jobs that are currently available to me, let's go with assistant to the executive VP. 
applying for a new ONC position is fun, but you never know if you recall from your past. Unfortunately, you are remembered for using poor judgment. Fortunately, you are remembered for your good interpersonal skills, and you have the job. Thank you. Okay, I'm back to a cubicle. Damn it. Unlimited boondoggles. No more three-hour lunches. What are the what are the what are boondoggles? <laughs> I want to know what what those are. <laughs> I encourage you to open up your browser right now and type boondoggles in. <laughs> I'm gonna do that right now. Go for it. Boondoggle. What is a boondoggle? Boondoggle. A project that is considered a useless waste of both time and money, yet is often continued due to extraneous policy or political motivations. Man, this game knows all about me. <laughs> Brooks DuPont asks you to conduct a seminar on how to represent MMC to the news media. This subject deals with human perceptions and communications. You know the vice president of administration, Joyce Stern, is the best qualified person to handle the project. Do you recommend Joyce Stern? Suggest Joyce Stern co-chair. Ask her for help. Suggest that the workshop is a bad idea. If there is one thing that I have learned, it's that people like getting favors. Because especially when you work for somebody who is powerful. I think we should ask her for help. All right. And your motivation behind that is the whole concept of being asked for favors. I would posit to you now, why wouldn't two, therefore, be a superior option to three? Because then you're questioning the executive vice president on their decision. They've no doubt know that Joyce Stern is the best qualified person, but they've chosen you regardless. Okay. Joyce sees little incentive for helping, but does so anyway. Your memo to Brooks DuPont on her contribution does not go unnoticed. Joyce becomes a confirmed fan when you pass along the bottle of Dom Perignon that Brooks gave you to celebrate a successful project. Woo! I told you! <laughs> Brooks DuPont has just left for a 35th college reunion dinner. Malcolm Farmsworth III storms down the hall, wanting to talk about a snag in the MAD program. Do I tell the truth? Make up an excuse. Recommend equipping key executives with beepers. Two is not going to work. One or three. This is 1983 when this game was released? 1982. I 1982. also want to know that Malcolm Farmsworth III is the motherfucking ruler of MMC. Yeah. I, so, <laughs> you don't make recommendations. <laughs> You're an assistant. You don't talk. <laughs> Maybe not be a smart ass to him yeah. if he's storming down the hall. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't do anything other than explicitly answer whatever he wants. Tell the truth. List honesty as a key quality on your resume and perhaps distribute it to religious organizations. Brooks DuPont personally kicks you out of his department with the hiking boots he bought especially for the occasion. After one year Oh Bam. my god! You got the influential Joy Stern on your side, but you antagonize Brooks DuPont, the head of the department. And the economy is still depressed. Oh Boom. my god!
<laughs> it's a combination of the poor de- performance and the depressed economy, uh, particularly considering how it was depressed last turn and the game perceived uh, J2 as having done a poor job again. So poor jobs twice in a row. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Okay. You get to see more of the game? I do get to see more of the game. Okay, so, business administrator, let's go with customer service clerk. Okay. You are remembered for using poor judgment, but you are remembered for your good interpersonal skills. And you got the job. You got a keychain! Wow, keychain! I miss my company car. (laughs) You miss my three-hour lunches. (laughs) (laughs) My my private office? What happened to that? Me getting paid half as much as I used to be? <laughs> what happened to that? <laughs> fucking fucking Brooks DuPont. <laughs> God. Fucking you yeah. trying to appeal to a banker's heart by pleading with him with your silver tongue. <laughs> <laughs> as if he hasn't heard sob stories before. Ah, Bucky Carter, a key salesman, I remember you, Bucky, I hope you remember me, <laughs> asks you to find him a copy of the of a report as you're preparing to leave for an evening engagement with an oft-prevailed-upon love interest. Help! <laughs> Although in a hurry, you have helped Bucky. This is appreciated, and you are told of a sales project opportunity. You appease your romantic interest with a small token of affection. In addition... Bucky Carter is a friend. You're in the middle of a conversation with an irate customer when Sam Danger, Vice President of Marketing, comes to your desk demanding a weekly report. (laughs) Sam Danger, I like that name. (laughs) Fucking cry. Oh, man. Hmm. You were in the middle of a conversation with Irate Cosmo and Sam Danger. Vice President of Marketing comes to your desk demanding a weekly report. It's got to be... Ew. Two. Good choice. The steam coming through the receiver makes the telephone too hot to handle. You hand Sam Danger the report, squirt some water on the phone, and get your ear burned by the worst language since Woody Hayes lost his last Rose Bowl. Sam walks away with an understanding smile. (laughs) For the first time in weeks, you have a conflict in an evening activity. You must decide between... Your romantic interest's birthday, the company softball game, drinks with the group project or product manager, or working late. Hmm. We need to we need to get back on the corporate ladder. Let's go ahead and uh, and I've made friends. I don't think I want to go to the company softball game. Let's go ahead and work. Let's go ahead and work late. You're going to abandon your romantic interest birthday to work they, late? They have not even told me this romantic interest name. You know you've gone too far when your idea of a relaxing evening at home is reading the latest market projections. After one year, you did an average job. You'll be remembered for the good words Bucky Carter says about you, the humor you maintain even in a crisis, and your anti-social attitude, J-squared John Jeremy. (laughs) That sounds about right. Yep. (laughs) The economy is expanding, though. But we're still stuck with threes. Oh, come on. Personnel clerk. You are remembered for providing ineffective solutions to problems, but you did have good judgment and an aggressive go-getter approach. 39 years old, wow. A 
official MMC jacket. Yeah. <laughs> I got my jacket back. <laughs> A real reason they demoted him, they found out he can't use an oven. <laughs> Larian's like, I'd hug you. <laughs> I appreciate that, Larian. I appreciate You've, that. You've uh, seen this before since uh, the Chuckle Fuck Democracy tackled this. No. During standard preparation of employee W-2 forms, you discover the personnel manager's nephew. Uh, talk to the personnel manager. That's what Chucklefuck Democracy picked. And Simon states the matter is confidential and advises you to imitate a discreet circuit. Whoever told you the world was fair, anyway. Oscar invites you for drinks after work with his uncle Simon. Except... Good choice. You did a good job after one year, man. Thank you. Impeccable honesty, open manner of addressing problems, you're good at interpersonal skills, and hearty socializing. Breaking free from your antisocial attitude, and you're able to ascend back to the force. Thank you very much. Back to treaty. Financial analyst, please. You're remembered for a lot of good things. You did have some poor judgment. But hey, you got access to the Watts line and a picture of Malcolm Farmsworth. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Explore further. I think on this one, right? Spoken oh, this is. Oh, I thought this was something I did. No, this is something that you did in the last one. Mm -hmm. Spoken okay. like someone investing their own money. A good strategy, but eventually you must return to the option board and make another decision. So, Pat Ivers, a college classmate. Wasn't he also my advisor? Financial last? analyst, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've learned so much. Fucking <laughs> guy. Uh, recommends buying out Mel Design Company based on private information about a breakthrough in circuit development. Well, we can truly totally trust Pat, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> The sad thing is I've forgotten what you did. <laughs> I will inform you that the group voted to acquire Meld. Ah. And Meld was already trying to be acquired back when uh when I was treasurer, right? The uh the uh, the the timelines of these things are a bit incongruous in that Things that are further up the ladder in job level state more in the future. You actually sort of like time travel when you go back down the job ladder. Oh. Yeah. Ha. Huh. So there's no like timeline of the game. This game was made in 1982. It's not that complicated. Recommends buying out the Mel Design Company based on private information. About a breakthrough in circuit development. The only thing that bothers me is that uh, private information. It's private information, so it's it's again breaking the law. That's never stopped the internet before. <laughs> Terminator, basically, you were kicked so hard you were booted back in time. Yeah, Brooks Dupont told you to get the fuck out of this department. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking guy. There you uh. went. <laughs> Hmm. College classmate. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. Two. Forget about attending the next class reunion, especially when Meld Design turns out to be a real gem. Pat is not likely to continue as your jeweler. Carrie Hoffman, the vice president of finance, recommends against the acquisition of Mel Design Company despite expert analyst reports to the contrary. Do you approach and question Carrie Hoffman, explore it further, or have the research company send reports to the senior vice president? So I remember what you did here. Uh, let's explore it further. Unfortunately, further exploration becomes a delay, which opens the door to Behemoth Systems, MMC's main competitor. The new meld owner must survive a bidding war. Okay, so I didn't want to buy meld in the first place, so... Sure. It's fine with me, I think. 
Elaine Penser, the editor of Circuit News Monthly, a key trade publication, asks for financial help. You have inside information that MMC is going to acquire the Mel Design Company. Nope, three. <laughs> Let's blackmail J2. Buy me CK2 DLC and you get a hint. <laughs> you did a good job, J2. You missed promising opportunities, but you had good interpersonal skills and good judgment. And the economy goes back to being depressed. That being said, you still have access to job fives. Okay. Getting somewhere again. Let's go ahead and go with compensation supervisor. You remembered for a lot of good things over bad things, and you got the job. Okay. <laughs> 50 grand per year. Cubicle, matching furniture, and personalized stationery. Interesting. Okay. Frank Herman, the vice president of manufacturing, asks you to give a higher than normal salary to a special recruit, Brighton Star. Do you grant the higher salary? Stick to established compensation tables. Ooh, okay. Vice president of manufacturing, and I'm, what title am I? You're a compensation supervisor or whatever. So he's like in a different category than you, but he's still further up the tree than you are. Sure, sure. And you don't have an option to kick this to like a supervisor in your instance. It's do it or not. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the VP is banging Brighton Star. <laughs> you know, if he really wanted to, he should have gone to my supervisor, even if I don't have the option for it. Right. Well, you're the person apparently who handles this job since you oversee compensation. That's why he came to you. Oh, let's see. Hmm. Since that is your job title, that's what you do for MMC. And that's why he's asking you to pay Brighton Star more. But why? Because he's a special recruit. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever heard of talent getting more benefits than the standard, you know, chip off the old blog J2? Yes, but, but, we, uh... I'm going to stop. Um, <laughs> I like where this is going. Tell me more. No. No, no tell me more. I no. like this. No. no. Uh, J2 hmm. story time. No. Uh, uh, come on. You'll feel better. Story. Story. I'm not doing a story. <laughs> Grant the higher salary, stick to the established compensation tables. This is executive suite, the master <laughs> spot. It is a managerial life simulation, a choose-your-own-adventure game made in 1982. I don't like getting. I don't like people getting paid more than me. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's. Hmm. <laughs> Fucking Frank J Herman. J J2 paralyzed by indecision. So many ulcers <laughs> in his stomach right now. So many ulcers. Fucking game. <laughs> Higher than normal salary to special recruit Brighton Star. Haven't you pissed off management enough? <laughs> <laughs> you used got... to be treasurer. <laughs> I want you to think about that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but you know how I got to be treasurer? By following company policies. Okay. <laughs> how did you how did you stop being treasure and fall back down the tree? The game gave me a 50/50 choice and I flunked it. 
<laughs> Fucking game. <laughs> Uh, Grant the higher salary. You get a good reputation with line people. You have the judgment to be flexible in company policy when it is in MMC's best interest. You hope Frank returns the favor when you want to transfer into manufacturing. Sweet! MMC is under heavy pressure from women employees about compensation structures. Joyce Stir, and the Vice President of Administration, asks you to manipulate the figures to indicate women receive equal pay. <laughs> Your research indicates differently. Do you? Manipulate the numbers, report the situation accurately, ask Jason Parlay to intercede. Do you just, like, pipe this up the chain and go, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man but Jason Parley is a friend of mine so is Joyce now that I think about it well she might have been a friend of yours back in the day when you were uh, you know a bit further up the food chain than you are now <laughs> mm, I'm not going to do one Okay, you're not going to manipulate the numbers, so you're not going to do what Joyce asks you to do, which means you either report the situation accurately and tell the truth and upset the vice president of administration, or you kick this shit to Jason Parlay. The question is, will Jason take it? We'll find out until you try, right? I forgot what Jason's title was, though. He was like vice, vice president, president of finance or something? Yeah. For anyone who might just be tuning in, this of course is Executive Suite. Uh, I had uh, I let my viewers have a go with the game through the hitbox voting mechanics, and uh, they ended up getting fired for bootlegging a project. So I brought in my internet friend J Square John Jeremy, who also does this hobby. This game is a rather new concept for him, and he found it interesting. And I figured it'd also be interesting since I enjoy listening to people's reactions to these wonderfully designed choices where you agonize over having insufficient information to make a qualified decision and you have to make one anyway. <laughs> or quit. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to go ahead and ask Jason to intercede. Jason raises an eyebrow quizzically and says he'll investigate the matter. Later, you find another compensation supervisor has been assigned to the task. You discover later that Jason Parley is not only impressed with your honesty, but also with your discreet memory capability. Nice. <laughs> Helena Gray, a close friend, files for a worker's compensation extension when you know she is fully recovered. The application comes to you for approval. Ugh. Do you approve it? Reject it. Try to talk some sense into her. Sign someone else's name to the claim. Not going to approve it. Not going to sign someone else's name to the claim. Kind of want to see J2 run through that one life game now. The one with different X's for male, female? I think Slagsaur is talking about Alter Ego. Oh. Which is another, like, a more complicated life sim game. I don't know whether you've ever seen that in action before, J Squared. Uh, I think... Don't you have it on your channel, maybe? I've done it. Uh, SKS has played it before as well. I think he might have played the browser version of it. I think I've seen, like, an episode of it. It's similar to this, I'd imagine, right? It's far more intricate, yes. Okay. The, the, the game also has a tendency to lecture people, but it can go from being a baby to uh, being an old person, and there are some fairly detailed deaths that can transpire. It's pretty serious business. Reject, try to talk some sense into her. Reject, try and talk some sense into her. So many viewers all around the world in English-speaking and even non-English-speaking countries await your decision. <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm trying to think of HR policies for this. Like, sure. 
Well, you would know that uh, she's a close friend of yours, and by outright rejecting it, you would upset her, and she might cause a, uh, a row. Uh, approving it, uh, when you know that she's fully recovered, would be like, eh, that would be a little disingenuous. Signing someone else's name to the claim, of course, is right out. Or you could attempt right. to try to discuss it with her, since, you're, you're, since you are her close friend. Right. I'm just. I'm wondering about the HR policy regarding that. Am I allowed to discuss the claim with Helena? I would assume so. Yeah. Why not? I would assume so. Let's go with three. It's a long, tough conversation, killing two bottles of wine and a few million brain cells. When Helena finally sobers up, she's forgotten all about her scam. Good. You did a good job after one year. You had good judgment. You befriended Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman. Yeah, good interpersonal skills and a positive management style. The economy's fair, and you're in the fives. Oh, God damn it! I have, I have no experience in any of those fives. Well, uh, thanks to befriending Frank Herman, who oversees manufacturing, right? Eh? 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 That would be production, right? You could also do engineer. Bright and Star was an engineer. Production foreman, engineer. Let's go with engineer. You remember for good and bad things, and you got the job. Okay. 51K per year, cubicle, working telephone. Woo! Matching furniture. Conrad Edison assigns you to a prestigious project. Working on the M&M for Microcomputer Design Review. Your joy turns to gloom when you find a design flaw in, the product, in a product component. Disclose the flaw. Okay. <laughs> Not even going to do anything else. Controversy rages as half the staff denies there is a flaw. Ultimately, you are vindicated, but the project is bogged down for months. You become addicted to Pepto-Bismol and must eat curried food once a week to balance the effect. <laughs> Senior management has dragged its heels on salary increases while total MMC profits have skyrocketed. Now a company-wide movement is fomented by Brighton Star. Ho oh, ho! That fucking guy. And other engineers to get royalties on inventions. You must choose to either join the job action, oppose the job action, tell Brighton you back the job action while telling Con Edison you support management. Uh... A pose. Okay. Your car is egged daily. When you ride your bicycle to work, it is stolen. You resolve to work at home with management support. Sweet. Politics begin to appear in the engineering department. Top engineers are vying for management positions. You are pressed to become involved. You decide to focus on work, avoid the situation and study for advanced engineering certificate, get involved in politics. Uh... When this came up uh, during the Chuckle Fuck Democracy run, they chose two. I think that worked out for them. Let's go with two. You add to your personal credentials while maintaining neutrality. Conversations are now diverted towards esoteric discussions of technology. On the part of your fellow engineers, quickly turn to the boredom. Your strategy works. You did a good job after one year. You acted in a progressive, decisive manner. You stood up for product quality. You remained loyal to management. And you stood at, stayed out of office politics. The economy is fair. And you got a six. Sweet. Let's go. Let's go with six. Come on. No negative things are remembered about you. Woohoo! I'm coming back up, baby. I'm doing it. I got my travel and entertainment allowance again. <laughs> I'm at the top of the mountain. <laughs> Not there yet. Close to the... Not even remotely, really. <laughs> about, about a little bit more than halfway. <laughs> Three hour lunch breaks, here we come. <laughs> J2 doesn't even know how many job levels there are either. This is great. I don't... Are there more than ten? I was thinking there yes, were ten. Yes, there are more than ten. Oh my god. <laughs> You must decide on the M&M for memory component design approach. 
Pressures applied by marketing, sales, and finance. Uh, one worked. Let's go with one. Okay. This practical strategy guarantees a return on investment, but does not gather state-of-the-art technology reviews. You note that the M&M 4 is selling out, which is more than most Broadway shows can say. Hey, guys! You remember <laughs> this one? Hmm. Well, let's see. We kicked this one up to a vote last time we saw this one, and it was a tie between two and three, both of which end the game. Alright, hold on, I got a phone call. <laughs> sure. It's my boss. Sure. Corporate J2 in action, everyone. Happy New Year, sir. Uh, I'm uh, in the middle of a game, but what can I do for you? I thought he was going to keep his microphone unmuted, too. That would have been great, right? <laughs> I thought that would have been a wonderful window into corporate corporate J2. Oh, man. <laughs> Shit. I know, like, Stonies, there shouldn't be a call-a-friend option. The game just became real. Oh, hey, hey guys, this is how J2 makes more bank than, than most of my viewers, I would dare say. He is professional. He totally knows how to get it done. Well, and I actually have a, I have a statement here to make, uh... J2 has actually revealed this before while we've been playing Payday 2. Uh, his boss actually knows that he does this hobby. So, I mean, him saying that he's playing a game, it's not a big deal. Also, Larian, maybe one day you'll learn what time zone I live in. <laughs> totally mentions that. Well, his boss probably doesn't know who I am. I guess if he did, that'd be pretty interesting, right? Anyway, I guess, um, take a break, get some snacks. I think I'll get some snacks, I guess. Maybe I'll get another drink. I ran out of beverage. So, uh, be right back, folks. If J2 comes back, uh, have him entertain you. For your amusement, of course.
22 is still busy. <laughs> How big is my house? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's fairly spacious. I like you asking, like, the chat, like, maybe they know how big his house is. I actually did get alcohol, though. J2 has driven me to alcoholism. Got some Mike's Hard Black Cherry Lemonade. I I do not consume or imbibe. Much of the way alcohol, I don't enjoy it, especially after seeing what it did to my father and his friends. That being said, Lord knows I need it. Ah. <laughs> Grimoth, I am losing this due to DD. Can I ask you a favor to get to be banned if I get too bothersome? Oh, sure, I can handle banning people. Ah. You know... We were all having exciting gameplay and our interactivity, and then this happened, right? Well, the noobs, we're in the middle of playing Executive Suite. Executive Suite is a fun little choose-your-own-adventure simulated game that uh, puts you, uh, uh, the game's made in 1982, it puts you uh, basically entering the workforce uh, and joining up employment with Mighty Microcomputer Corporation. J2, who has unmuted his microphone, is actually the player here, because he doesn't have any experience with the game at all, and it's pretty fascinating, I think, to listen to people's reactions as they encounter these events for the first time, because they're so fun. Indeed. Everything all I'm... right, J2? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I've left it, I left it in, in great suspense with the one option that we know won't end the game. Yes, <laughs> as I revealed, bootlegging, as we saw with Yamja Raditz, gets you fired. Quitting and starting your own company means you quit. <laughs> so let's go ahead and accept the decision. All right. You're not happy, but it isn't worth ending your future at MMC. Your initiative is recognized, if not rewarded. You are managing a key M&M for project segment. Ginny, one of your younger but critical engineers, is having marital problems. <laughs> I forgot how awesome three is. Give her time off for personal affairs. Give her lots of work. <laughs> call and complain to her husband. <sighs> I'm not going to do three. I'm not. You're no so, fun. <laughs> I'm just, no, <laughs> I'm not. No fun. I'm not. The no fun zone. Trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> the Let's, struggle uh, is real. <laughs> <laughs> Do I give her lots of work or give her time off of personal affairs? Now, you can give people lots of work and get their minds off of, uh, of, 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 her problems. Per or it could be problems. that her, par her marital problems will completely derail your key m and 4 project segment. It can, but giving her time off could also do that as well, if she's a critical engineer. But because she's already having troubles, mm -hmm. I think that giving her time off is better uh, than rather overloading her. So let's go ahead and go with one. You judge the critical factors and back off. This isn't Dynasty. You don't need a soap opera at work. <laughs> After two years, you did a good job. Yes. You, you, made pre you had pragmatic decisions. You didn't stand your ground under pressure, which is going to pop up if you accept that decision. It's either that or you quit the game, or you get fired. You're good under personal skills and supporting and having faith in your people. The economy is fair, and you got sixes. Mm. I was an engineer before, right? Mm-hmm. 
So I'm assuming the next step up from that is assistant plant manager? No, that's production. So there is no engineer job for me at seven. Mm, you're at sixes. Yeah, yeah. Market research supervisor. Who would that be under? I don't remember the MMC hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't answer that question. Oh, man. It's terrible. Hey, look, if you get refused the job, you just get sent back to the screen. It's not like you lose anything for it other than your time. Let's go with three. You're remembered for positive things. And you get the job. Cool. Management workshop. Interesting. <laughs> uh, 65K a year, cubicle, travel entertainment allowance, and life insurance policy. I wonder, I, I forget exactly how much of your time has been spent working back up to the treasurer position. Like that, <laughs> that same level <laughs> after fucking, you get... <laughs> fucking game. I was, I was there within like five years, I think. <laughs> I spent more time down than I have up. Doug MacArthur, the Senior Vice President of Operations, says that the quality control rejection rate is too high. He assigns you to correct the problem. Your response is, must change the standards, must fight Doug, change jobs, don't enforce the standards, talk to all parties involved. Well, I would imagine that you'd want as much information as possible. So I would want to talk to all parties involved to get the best understanding. Is that what we're going with? Yes. Good move. There's nothing like having the facts before acting. Cool. An investigation reveals that pre-assembled parts are causing quality control rejections. You must act to rectify the problem originating at your supplier, Mel Design... <laughs> fucking place. Mel Design Company. Do you... Order more parts to compensate. Assemble parts at a higher price in the home plant. Pressure meld for improvement. Ah. Not going to be number one. So the question is two or three. Uh. That is what you get when you steal alien shit. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Hmm. In the eighties, I don't think manufa like computer electronics companies manufactured their own parts or even had the capabilities of doing it. Maybe. Right. MMC like, just computerized, okay? Yeah. Like we had this event happen while you were playing the game. Yeah. Let's pressure meld for improvement. A little motivation can get the pre-assembled parts of the quota without disrupting your assembly procedures. Threatening to take your business elsewhere should qualify as a little motivation. Okay. Disaster strikes while Barney Stone, the plant manager, is on vacation and you are in charge. Gale force winds knock down a wall sheltering expensive quality control equipment. Do you evacuate your personnel immediately? Try to save the equipment. Call in Red Adair. Who, as far as you're aware, you have no idea who the fuck that is, but it sounds like someone cool that you can call. Right. You have no contextual information for that. <laughs> this basically means, why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Um, one, evacuate your personnel immediately. Yes, all your personnel make it safely to a shelter, except for one fanatic kite flyer who sees these winds as the opportunity of a lifetime. Thank God it's not a flood or the surfers would be in the next county by now. <laughs> you did a good job after two years. You supported and had faith in your people and lots of other wonderful things, like acting in a progressive and decisive manner. Woo! And the economy is expanding. It's all sevens. <laughs> Fucking, you give me that accounting manager job again. That's the wrong job! Was it? I thought I pressed six. Did you press six? I thought I saw five. A county manager. <laughs> yes. Yes. You call him your fucking tits, J2. <laughs> yes. I have a company car again. This is different. 
Yeah, because it's not the same job. It's just in the same, you know, that is the accounting title associated with it. You're like, I thought I could just input the same things. You can't get the same exact job in a playthrough. No! No! You're gonna have to think. No. Yes, you are. I thought I was gonna skate through job level seven. <laughs> Damn it. You see the opportunity to computerize the accounts receivables department. This will displace six workers but cut processing time in half. What will you do for the workers? Find them other jobs at MMC? Give them two weeks severance pay? Give them a computer training? Uh. <laughs> hmm. This will display six workers but cut processes in time to have. You know, it worked for me when I got computer training. Let's give them computer training. This demonstrates to the employees that they're an ongoing part of the company. The bad news? Expect salary increased demands. The good news? It's worth it. Nice. Fuck. Yeah. The return I, all of I the, had to read, all I had to read was the first two words. <laughs> the return of the fucking big badass himself. You remember what happened the last time you told him the truth, right? Brooks <laughs> Dupont said, fuck your couch. Get the fuck back to job level three. War! <laughs> Malcolm Farmsworth wants to place his nephew in the accounting supervisor position. You know a better qualified junior accountant, Bernard, who is being courted by Behemoth Systems, MMC's main competitor. <sighs> so the only option is four, right? <laughs> I'm not going to fight for Bernard. Okay. I'm not going to plan to sabotage Vincent. I'm not going to recommend a raise for Vincent. I'm going to recommend a raise for Bernard. Your compromise eases ego bruising, but doesn't keep Bernard at MMC. The consolation is that Behemoth has to pay more than they expected for his services. Okay. <laughs> Fucking guy. You are asked to decide between two MMC customers, analog concerns, and dynamic industries, vying to introduce the first mad units. Analog is willing to pay a per unit surcharge, but you question their financial stability. You recommend analog, dynamic, or both. Ha. Huh. As far as we're aware, dynamic is their, their financial stability is unquestionable, but they're not willing to pay that per unit subcharge. Surcharge, excuse me. Mm hmm. Hmm. Sockman's like, write this down! <laughs> Why write it down? <laughs> uh. I could recommend both, but that doesn't do anything for me. Question of financial stability. <laughs> boss, boss, awesome keeps repeating casual sex. <laughs> That's right. You are asked to decide between two MC customers, being like, "I recommend both." That's not a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with dynamic. Going with dynamic industries plays it safe, but market integrity and viability are assured. You can go on vacation during the mad computer launch if you wish. You did a good job after two years. You supported and had faith in your people. You acted in a progressive and decisive manner. You had pragmatic decision making and you had good judgment. The economy is fair and... Controller of the company. Let's go for it. You're remembered for good things, mercifully. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I make more money as the company controller than I did as the uh, treasurer. It also factors in how long you've been tenured with the company. I think you're tenured for like what five fucking years. Whatever you got treasurer as opposed to I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I got my private office back. I got my Buick company car. The only thing I don't have Three is my lunches. lunch. Damn it. Let's go for it. Uh oh. Mexican is getting involved again. As controller, you approve credit sales to the Mexican government. The peso has fallen, and Mexico is not making payments, but they still want more products. I'm, uh, I'm actually going to make a revelation here, folks. I don't remember being company controller. I genuinely don't remember this thing at all. I've remembered every single other one up to this point. I have no recollection of this. Fly to Mexico City and bargain for payment. Write off your accounts receivable. Sell them more products on a cash basis. Uh. <laughs> I'm not going to write off my accounts receivable. And I'm not going to fly to Mexico City and bargain for payment. We tried that once before with the banks. Did not work out so well. So you want more product? You pay me right then and there. Three. The renegotiated deal draws bitter responses, but, but compliance from the Mexicans. You change Acapulco vacation plans to a trip to Europe. MMC experiences a temporary cash flow problem because of high costs on MAD Project R&D. You must decide to delay for 30 days payment of employee salaries, supplier bills, profit sharing contribution, deposit on annual meeting. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what the fuck profit sharing contribution means, J2. Uh, so my assumption is that you are paying for uh, stock dividends. So people okay. who have stock in your company... Okay, you know, I, okay, I understand now. Yeah, you're paying into a, into a, into a treasury for that. So I'm going to tell you right now, there's only one option, and that's number four. Yeah, because like, mm, delay employee salaries for 30 days? Mm, that's a good idea. With immediate cash, there may be no need for an annual meeting. Tell the resort the check is in the mail. Also... Cancel your plans to personally inspect the Bahamas site prior to the meeting. <laughs> a former Ooh. romantic interest heads an IRS audit team which is investigating MMC's tax filings. Cooperate. <laughs> and it's fucking bad. It is. It's fucking bad. <laughs> Do you cooperate, stonewall, <laughs> renew the relationship? Fucking casual sex for the win. <laughs> We're going to cooperate. Cooperating with the IRS is like trying to teach a cobra to count. Even if you succeed, your stomach lining won't survive the ordeal. That was bad? Why was that bad? What is, you join a select MMC group celebrating the launch of the M&M 4 line. Heavy celebrating leads to heavy drinking. On the way home, Joyce Stern, the vice president of administration, offers you a nightcap plus other enticements. I immediately regret never having been down this path before. This is awesome. I would have loved to have given this to my viewers. <laughs> Why have none of you ever become company controller when I live broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's a terribly kind offer, but I'm already late for night school. Egad, woman, get a control of your get control of yourself. Perhaps we should discuss the matter further in a motel. <laughs> so, do you want to offend Joyce? 
Oh, with number two, God. do you want to sound like you're such a fucking square? With number, uh, that's a terribly kind offer, but I'm already late for night school. I'm okay. not going with number one. Not. So it's two or three. Do you take advantage of her while she's drunk? Do you think 1982 game cares about that? <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Uh, oh man! You're 49. Uh, you might even be in the 50s by now. But at this point, oh, you gad woman, get a control, of, get control of yourself. Perhaps we should discuss this matter further in a motel. Hmm. <laughs> what if it's a trap? <laughs> This game would never work to create a trap situation. <laughs> the best part is that we don't have any information about whether Joyce is like married or not, but we do know that she's the one who's offering the nightcap plus other enticements. She's making the presentation here. Two. Joy slumps against the wall in mortification. At work tomorrow, she drives your back to the wall with a series of memos maligning everything from your work habits to your choice of deodorants. Ah. You did a good job. You had a positive management style and you had pragmatic decision making, but you put off the powerful Joy Stern. The economy <clears throat> is depressed. What? <laughs> Because of your good performance, the way is open to you. <laughs> yes! Give it! Fortunately, oh, no. you are remembered for your pragmatic decision making, your good judgment, and your open manner of addressing problems. However, many years ago, John <laughs> Jeremy decided to antagonize the powerful Brooks DuPont who sent his ass flying back to job level three. Come on, three gets one, three gets one. Congratulations, John. You have the job of Vice President of Finance. The following came in your morning electronic mail. <laughs> Private office, stock options, $10,000 expense budget, life insurance policy, Buick company car, and exempt from the blood drive. <laughs> you have to become the fucking vice president of the Catholic branch in order to become exempt from the blood drive. But still no lunches. That's right, Slaxor. My lunches. My lunches. No. <laughs> All right. J2 hasn't been up to level 9 before. As noted before, the game gets harder the further you go up in the levels. And just a mistake can send your ass flying back down the ladder. <laughs> like real life, right? <laughs> like real life. The combination of the M&M4 launch and Mad Project R&D creates unexpected cash flow shortages. How do you raise cash to continue the new product development? Sell stock to the public. Increase your credit line. Initiate employee stock purchase plan. It's also worth noting, as Cragnack says, uh, this game will eventually end up retiring you once you get so old. Uh, so at this point, if you go tumbling back down the ladder again, you don't have that much time. Yeah, I figured as much. I think that... I will initiate an employee stock purchase plan. Two reasons. One, it brings money in. And two, it will uh, also entice the employees to buy it, and then get yeah. rewarded for their hard work. It gets them invested more inside the workplace. The, small, the smaller potential source of funds provides other returns. The sale works as an employee incentive. You cite Tom Sawyer as a patron saint of finance strategy. <laughs> MMC decides to render a stock offering to raise capital. <laughs> you need to choose an investment banker to assist with the offering, J2. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> so ah. it's your old college friend Pat, not Pat, and Jason Parlay fucking help me. <laughs> 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 so my problem now is Pat, I've pissed Pat off from a long time ago. Yes, from a long time ago. Does the game still count that? It will not factor directly into this event, I don't think. It's an entirely independent instance of all the way long ago. Mm -hmm. As to answer your question, Terminator, no. Pat is just used for the names of two people in this game. Parlay has always had my backlash studies. Let's go ahead and call him. Jason is a good source of objective information. Jason selects his old college chum, Pat Ivers' older brother. Okay. <laughs> you must meet with stock analysts to explain MMC's recent stock price declines. You decide to blame market conditions... Explain that Malcolm Farmsworth is not having an affair with a strategic planner. Explain new product introduction delays. Take the group to a well-liquored lunch. <laughs> it's not going to be number two. You're not dismissing number four out of hand. This happens a lot. <laughs> Explain mm. new production, new product introduction delays. Everyone wants four. <laughs> what does John want? Yeah, what what do I want? I'm debating between one and three. Sure. Debating between one and three. The question is, do I want to reveal delays internally? And if I do so, will that drive the stock down even further? Mm. Whereas if you just blame market conditions, yeah, sure. It's, that's, that's it's okay. corporate speak. Yeah, yeah, it's corporate speak. So it doesn't matter. Let's go with one. High interest rates and a tight money supply have curtailed MMC production expansion. You note the same conditions have affected swimming pool construction in your backyard. <laughs> you did a good job after three years. You supported and had faith in your people. You had resourcefulness. You did have a somewhat indecisive manner. You had an open manner of addressing problems. The economy is fair. And... Job level, level 10. 10! The Senior Vice President of Finance and Administration... Does that mean I have Joyce's job now? Sounds like I'm above Jason Joyce. Parley. I'm not exactly sure. Well, you are remembered for supporting and having faith in your people, your positive management style, your impeccable honesty, but once upon a time you did provide an effective solution to problems. That whole treasury thing a few decades ago gets drudged back up. Still, you got the job. Yes! I have a private corner office... 10,000 stock options, $20,000 expense budget, executive washroom key, Mercedes company car, and an executive exercise program at a salary of $181,000 per year. Somebody translate that for me for modern day. I would just like to see that typed in somewhere. <laughs> so, so many people in chat just said, well, your choices are fail and fail. You're never recovering from getting booted down here by Brooks DuPont. <laughs> Prepare to get fucked. <laughs> no lunch. Boo. <laughs> MMC's rapidly expanding sales and marketing efforts mandate revision of MMC's computer system. You are asked to file a recommendation. Do you suggest installing a large centralized mainframe, expanding the current system using microcomputers... Mass purchase of slide rules. It's not number four. And I don't want to use the current system. And a large centralized mainframe has never gone bad at all. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Larry and my boss drives a BMW. Uh, <laughs> didn't know we were playing a racing game. <laughs> uh, what is their definition of microcomputers? Probably a bit less glamorous than our definition of microcomputers. Well, but what I'm saying is, is that in 1983, when this game was made... Well, well, well. Yeah, you just have to keep that in mind. Like, think of, like, sci-fi interpretations. They're just computers that are much smaller, but are still capable of doing the job, I imagine. That's why you'd recommend them. Using microcomputers. <sighs> <sighs> Dark Shark says my current salary is $443,375 in modern day times. Mainframe. You decide that long-term advantages outweigh short-term cash flow considerations. The highly pleased computer staff starts acting and speaking like neurosurgeons. <laughs> A much-needed research and development investment in the MAD computer program comes up during a tight cash flow period. You recommend the R&D investment. You recommend the R&D investment. You're against the R&D investment. Postpone the investment. Purchasing needed technologies. Ha. Much needed research and development investment in the MAD computer program comes up during a tight cash flow period. To answer your question, the noobs, while J2 is thinking, I have a tabletop game which begins in uh, a little over two hours. As a result, I don't have any other grand plans other than preparing to play and then actually playing in that game. Let's go ahead and purchase needed technologies. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, it's not one and two. I'm just debating on three and four right now. Okay. Postpone. Final answer? Final answer. A more favorable investment climate might occur, but like a fine wine, time will only add to R&D costs. It's time to prepare the annual business plan for the board of directors. Malcolm Farmsworth III asks you to review the departmental budgets. You decide to... Be a star by finding faults. Be firm but fair. Go easy on the reviews and let managers live with their budgets. Two. You reach a compromise between corporate and departmental needs. You display the acumen necessary to become an executive vice president. Don't be afraid to explore the possibility. You did a good job after three years. You had a bureaucratic approach to problem solving and you crippled MMC's R&D efforts. However... You had good judgment and strong leadership qualities. The economy is fair. <laughs> and the opportunity to become an executive vice president is open to you. Let's go for it. Fucking DuPont. Fortunately, you're remembered for your impeccable honesty, your good judgment, and acting in a progressive and decisive manner. However, remember all the way back when instead of going to your romantic interest birthday or a softball game, or hanging out with people to drink, you chose to work long hours and developed a reputation for an antisocial attitude. You got the job? Yes. 58 years old, 31 years with the company, executive vice president at $285,000 per year, 
private corner office, 50,000 stock options, $40,000 expense budget, Mercedes company car, life insurance policy, and a country club membership. That doesn't get used. But <laughs> hey, you like golf, according to what your employment files. <laughs> <laughs> Behemoth Systems, located in Houston, offers you a job as executive vice president in charge of their North American operation. Decline. Your future still lies with MMC. This show of loyalty gets you a visit to the executive suite. You hope this predestines a permanent move, but in any case, you now have monogrammed towels in the executive washroom. Behemoth Systems makes a tender offer for control of MMC. You head a task force to reject the bid. <laughs> so I fight the offer, buy some of MMC stock on speculation, play up to Behemoth's management team, retire. Not going to retire. Not going to buy stock on speculation. What is their definition of play up? Cozy up to them, maybe? Yeah, I think cozy up would be an interpretation of that. Let's fight the offer. After rivaling the Bendix Martin Marietta takeover for excitement, MMC absorbs Behemoth. Yes! Sports. This one is so thrilling. Wide world of sports. Covers it in a two-part story. Malcolm Farmsworth offers you a job as president of the International Division. It is a respected position in the company, officed in London. It takes you outside of the home office, and you have the president of the International Division title. And the game ends. The game ends. Yes, with you. You mean you got you became president, so you ascended to the top of the international division. You rule over that. I see. The only reason why you'd want to stay here is because you're gunning basically for Malcolm Farnsworth's position itself. Would he realize that if I said no? Who can say what powerful people think, right? <laughs> that means yes. Buying an Amer English and American Dictionary gives you that position and ends the game with you being the president of the International Division. What does Ask for Time do? I don't think I've ever picked that option before. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he probably says, no, fuck your time, make a decision now. That's just a hypothesis. Fucking, fucking Farmsworth. Oh, yes. Kiska story time. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. This, uh, this actually choice came up ever so long ago, and Kisk was the one who was in it making the choices, and he chose to buy an English-American dictionary and became president of the International Division. Decline. You will settle for nothing less than the executive suite. Even English civilization cannot sway you. If MMC were a brokerage firm, its name would be MMC and Jeremy. You'll notice that all of these events that have popped up for this job haven't been so much like solving drama with in the company as solving drama surrounding yourself. Yeah. You did a good job after one year. Good judgment, your main loyal to management, strong leadership qualities. Basically, all those decisions are, you want to quit? Want to go somewhere else and end the game that way? Because who knows <laughs> whether you will have this opportunity to become president <laughs> or not. Oh, man. Let's, let's go for it. Welcome, John. I believe you know everyone on the board of directors. Many of us wouldn't mind changing places with you. 
a nominee for MMC's presidency. We'd like to review your very interesting career at MMC. The board of directors always likes to look at a nominee's positive traits. John, in reviewing your files and talking to your peers, you're remembered for the four top things. The good <laughs> words Bucky Carter says about you. Getting the influential Joy Stern on your side, although you upset her later. Befriending Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman and remaining loyal to management. In our review, the board also came across some unpleasant incidents in your work record, such as not standing your ground under pressure, also putting off the powerful Joy Stern, so you got a love-hate relationship with her, antagonizing Brooks Dupont, who sent your ass flying down the ladder, and missing promising opportunities. The board must now consult on your nomination to the executive suite. While the board takes a break, perhaps Alfred Lazarus, our newest board member, can show you the executive suite. Alfred says he is impressed with your background. As you return to the boardroom, Alfred pulls you into a small conference room. He compliments your style and offers to double your salary if you'll come to his company, National Transport, as executive vice president. No. Congratulations. The executive suite is yours for the taking. Continue unmolested to the board of directors. <laughs> I'll let that sit there for a minute or two and bask in that. <laughs> Well, Master Azra, this wasn't the first try. This was the second try. First try was a... That that was bullshit. <laughs> first try, you chose to marry Pat. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> the board hopes you will enjoy your new offices. The compensation committee has tried to make your compensation package as attractive as the view from the executive suite. Let's see how accounting evaluates your current worth. Your annual salary is very high. For the personal expense budget, stock options, the title of president, which is worth one million unto itself. Cash value of life insurance, executive suite office, company car Mercedes Benz, reserve garage parking, other perks, work status, you are in the executive suite, which is the title of this game. Family life, 150,000, in your current age of 59, the score for that's low, because it took you so long to get here. Total current value, though, over three million. J two in his second try. Well, he was part of the, uh, the chuckle fuck democracy. Still, that being said, John, you better hurry home to pack. You don't want to miss the board's annual European retreat. We leave tomorrow at ten. President John Jeremy of MMC. Dashing through the airport, you pick up the Wall Street Journal. No one could miss this front page article. You can read it. The Wall Street Journal. John Jeremy named MMC head. John Jeremy has been named president of Mighty Microcomputer Corporation, according to an announcement released by the board of directors yesterday. Mr. Jeremy is the unanimous selection to occupy MMC's heralded executive suite. The new president joins the short list of employees to work their way up the company to the top position. MMC has a firm policy of promoting from within, and Mr. Jeremy was given the nod for work done on MMC's M&M4 and Mad Systems introductions, which revolutionized the industry. This is the best flight to Europe ever! <laughs> Oh, Even man. Even starts forcing office staff to use the controllers. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, I'm going down the chat now. It's like, uh, Zerfall says, I'm not going to become J2's work rival anytime soon. Um, <laughs> uh, sh don't encourage J2. He must know his corner. <laughs> the uh, What did uh, what did the Lax Stodies say there? Uh, 
the epic tale of J2 climbing, sliding back down, crashing, and then ascending in the corporate ladder again. Well, everyone on in the chat just gave up on him. <laughs> I knew he had one more chance to make it up there. Sweet. Oh, uh, he had his CK uh, he had his CK2 hat on in the first try. <laughs> I did because it made sense. Alliances. Oh man. You made an alliance three mil. With the wrong person. Yeah. Uh, three mil. I saw three mil. <laughs> Honestly, if this was J2 in real life, he'd spend ninety percent of that money on a giant useless thing. So, so many of them made fun for how you uh, spoke with your boss before you muted your microphone. Like, oh, sir, he's got a boss. And I'm like, this is why J2 makes more money than many of my viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Gray flannel fun and your friends at MMC wish you well in the real world or on your next attempt. At the supermarket sweep. <laughs> I used to love that show. <laughs> I liked it too. Oh, man. That is awesome. J2 is now a bourgeois and we must revolt against him. <laughs> Purple the Tempest. Morning, everyone. Nice to see some executive suite and to hear J2 being J2 as usual. No. No. That is President Jeremy to you, Purple the Tempest. <laughs> Oh, man. I would have gotten there so much faster if I hadn't made that damn mistake as a treasurer. Should have jumped out the window. <laughs> there's, no oh. t there's, there's no telling whether you would have gotten there faster. You don't know what uh, would have been open to you after treasurer. You might have made mistakes on that. It's true. It's true. That's right, Purple the Tempest. You do beg for forgiveness. My gosh. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> No, this time it's J2 succeeding. Who wants to live in a world where J2 is doing well at video games? Should have boss awesome. Should have had casual sex. <laughs> I think I think President Jeremy can have as many lunches and keychains as he wants. This is true. I I own the damn keychains. I make them. I will have all the keychains. He is the one who can go storming around the place and people tell him the truth and get their ass kicked back down the ladder by Brooks DuPont. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I would have loved to have seen Brooks' face. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine oh. by that point he's either retired or dead and they just remember that. <laughs> yeah, right. J2's response to sex in this game, fuck bitches, make money. <laughs> it's, it's not unlike my responses in real life. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. Now, J2 did marry Pat for his first try out. He, he tried the, he tried the let's have bitches, alliances and all, and MMC's like, there, there are no alliances here. <laughs> <laughs> DuPont, my dear, can you send this filthy casual back down to the bottom of the corporate ladder, please? Brooks DuPont says, with pleasure, lifts the hiking boots and warm! Get the fuck out of my department! <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So, uh, what do you think about Executive Suite? That's a very good game. I had fun. That's the point. That was definitely fun. And uh, now you see why I end up introducing it to viewers. I, I You know, I know most of the stuff that happened, so... I can't end up being surprised by the charm of the events, but uh, that doesn't mean that other people can't be. Is it always? Is it always like every option but one is wrong? Mm, I wouldn't say that. It just uh, assigns like different sort of modifiers depending on the situation. It's just like you know, you'll be remembered for like good or bad things depending on that. There's a best option, but as you've seen, you can still pick like, less than the best, and still go through, except for certain events like, hey, stop doing this. Do you accept the decision? Do you bootleg the project? Or do you make your own company, right? It was the decision that had Yamcha Raditz get kicked out of MMC. Yeah. Yes, corporate controller was in a circumstance that I don't remember having gone through at all.
This was fun. Made in 1982, J2. Yeah. I don't remember the month, but uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to check out that other one that you that uh, you recommended too. Oh yeah, Alter Ego. That is a lot more involved and detailed. I've done that before for live broadcast too, and had people pick uh, choices. Let me actually see. Oh, I'll pull that up for you now. There's a browser version of the game, so it's actually free to access. You don't even have to get the DOS box version, fucked with or working or anything. Go ahead and disappear. Uh, this for a moment. Come on, you gonna crash on me? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, there you go. There's the, uh, appears to be playalterego.com. Uh, what if you could live your life over again? I haven't played the browser version, but... I, I think it's pretty much the same. They might have, like, updated some of the text for, like, this time, but... Hmm. There you go. That'll have to be something you tackle. Cool. Un unless we need to have another Grimoth live broadcast where J2 stares at a, at a DOS boss fuck screen and makes choices. <laughs> <laughs> so many people are apparently interested in hearing J2 make educated decisions. <laughs> Do I have Alter Ego installed on this computer? No. It's just uh, this game and Oregon Trail Deluxe. I'd have to pop in the DOS box version again. But maybe that can be maybe that can be another thing. Let's watch J2 play more Life Sims, everyone. <laughs> An alter ego that's much longer, much more convoluted, and deadlier. There is some serious shit that pops up in alter ego. The game like gets a little bit of preachy uh, with morality stuff, but uh, it's pretty fun. We just like hearing the sounds of strife and struggling. <laughs> that's right. Not as not as fun as Executive Suite though. That uh, Executive Suite's pretty bright, bite sized. J two plays S O L V N S. I know VN stands for visual novels. What does SOL stand for? 